Thank you, thank you, Andy. Police. Ma'am, can you tell us how you got scammed? My husband died a few years ago, so it has been a struggle bringing up my two children on just one income. So sometimes, I would look for supermarket e-vouchers that are discounted on buy now, sell now. I saw some listings and I found one that I thought was pretty good. I know $420 is a lot of money, but it was for groceries and I could use the savings to pay out other bills. So, I bought the voucher. Then what happened? When I tried using the e-voucher at the supermarket, it was rejected as a fake. That's when I realised that I had been scammed. Good morning. Morning. Jennifer, Katik. So, what do we have today? There's been an uptick in the number of scam cases on the e-commerce platform Buy Now, Sell Now. Multiple victims have reported that after making their payments for their purchases, their items would either turn out to be fakes or not delivered. And then the sellers would block them and become uncontactable. So, are there any similarities in the reports? Based on the information given by the victims, we've isolated the following details. As you can see, all the email addresses have the word ABO in it such as abel triple ten at promail.co, abel and kane double nine double nine at fffhmail.co, abel and abetting at one two three fmail.com.sgp. And all these victims were instructed to make their payments to these two bank accounts. The exact same sentence structure and wording were used for all the selling posts. The only differences were the items sold and the prices. <sighs> Just copy and paste. <laughs> That's right. And finally, the IP addresses all originated from mobile phones. Okay, so we're looking at the work of an individual here, but we cannot rule out the involvement of a syndicate. Jennifer, why don't you follow the money, see where that leads us, deep dive into those two bank accounts. I want to know everything about them. Katik, check out email addresses, usernames that have the name Abel in them. See if they've been used on any e-commerce platforms, social media, forums, that kind of thing. Okay, let's go. Both bank accounts are offshore accounts registered under the online gambling website Win Super Big. Mm. But it's unlikely that an online gambling operator could be behind this. I mean, the amounts being cheated are, what, small potatoes compared to the profits that the operator would have raked in from bets alone. It looks like these two bank accounts are dead ends. But there's a bank account that might not be. Yesterday, I came across a scam case on another e-commerce platform. The same modus operandi, similar email address, same wording used for the seller's listing. The only difference is that the victim paid to a different bank account. Jennifer, I've got an unknown bank account here that might be connected to our case. Sure, just send it over to me. I'll check it out. Thanks. It turns out the bank account belongs to him, Po Kang Hui. Mr. Po has seen several cash injections and withdrawals of similar amounts. So his average balance has been more or less the same over the last few years. That's interesting. The cash flow in and out are all under the mandatory reporting threshold of 20,000. So that means Mr. Po is either a syndicate member or a money mule. And I'm thinking money mule. Well, it's impossible for him to be either because Mr. Po passed away two years ago.
So if Mr. Po is deceased, who has access to his bank accounts? Mr. Po's wife, Madam Lee, and his son, Kim Po Zhen Long. Both of them have the same registered address. Madam Lee works as a cleaner, but she's had thousands of dollars deposited into and withdrawn from her account regularly. Not a crime in itself, but certainly suspicious. The son, Kane Po Tsen Long, is currently unemployed. He has no suspicious bank account activity, but I ran his name through a database and found this. Prior records for cheating and the MO used was similar to this case. So we're dealing with a repeat offender. Kane Po was also the main suspect on another online scam case. I spoke to Ayo Noah, who was in charge at the time. Kin Po was suspected of committing an e-commerce scam. But the thing is, we couldn't link him to the bank accounts and IP addresses used by the perpetrator. Then what happened? We thought we could catch him red-handed. Madam Lee, do you have the key? The key? Oh, yes, yes, police officer. I'll go and get the key to unlock the bedroom door now. Boya! Yeah. I'm giving your bedroom key to the police, okay? Boy, the police are going to your room now! But by the time we entered his bedroom, Kane had already reformatted everything. The hard disk was nuked. Since no incriminating evidence could be found on Kane's laptop or digital devices, charges could not proceed. Sounds like this Kane Po is very savvy with computer software and hardware. We currently have eyes on his residence. Neither he nor his mother have been seen leaving the unit since surveillance started. Kane hasn't been sighted leaving his bedroom at all. In fact, it seems he's on his laptop 24-7. Then it's going to be very challenging to arrest him without him destroying evidence. Has surveillance reported any unusual activity? Yes, Kane's a heavy online shopper. He gets at least two deliveries a day. Hi, delivery for Kane Po. You leave it on the floor. And his mother always tells the delivery person to put the parcel outside. Once they leave, she takes it in. All right, Kartik. Call the serious crime branch. We're going to need the assistance for a tactical breach. It's imperative that Kane's arrest is swift and decisive. Jennifer, get in touch with the technology crime forensics branch. We're going to need their presence at the point of arrest, just in case Kane manages to destroy the evidence and nuke his hard disk remotely. But Min Xiang, by the time we managed to force our way through the lock gate and the front door, Kane would have destroyed any crucial evidence. You're right. In I.O. Noah's case, Madam Lee employed a delaying tactic so that Kane had enough time to destroy the evidence. But we have learned from that encounter with him. So we are going to deploy a strategy of our own. Roger. Hi, 
Hi, delivery for Kane Pots and Long. Auntie, is this the correct address? Mm, yeah. Eh, you leave it at the door. I will bring it in later. Auntie, wait. What do you want? I'm sorry, Auntie. Uh, may I just take a picture inside to show that the package was delivered? Okay. Thank you, thank you, Auntie. Police! Bye, bye, the police are here! Bye, the police are here! Bye, the police are here! Bye, bye, the police are here! I'm Senior Investigation Officer Lim Ming Xiang from the Anti-Scam Command. Kim Po, you're under arrest for cheating. Sir. Do these belong to you? Who are you working with? Nobody. I'm working alone. How did you do it? I found a way to trick Buy Now Sell Now into thinking that I'm using a mobile phone to access it instead of a laptop. So when anyone investigated my user activity, the IP address would indicate that it was from a mobile device. Clever, right? Why are you using offshore bank accounts that belong to an online gambling operator? I have a personal line of credit with Win Super Big. It's easier for me to gamble when all the money goes directly there to pay any losses. Okay, what happens to any winnings? I just cash it out and transfer to my parents' bank accounts. Is your mother involved in your scheme? No, she had nothing to do with it. You realise that by doing this, you may be implicating her? No. I didn't realise it, but she really had nothing to do with this. In the case you have just seen, investigators found that 396 victims had been cheated of an estimated $108,000. According to prosecutors, this was one of the largest e-commerce fraud cases committed by an individual in Singapore. From 2018 to 2020, the police received numerous reports from Kane Post victims who had been cheated while making online purchases. After payments had been made via bank transfer, he would cease communications and not deliver the products. Thanks to the diligence and resourcefulness of investigators from the Anti-Scam Command, Kane Po was apprehended and prosecuted. The police takes a serious view of persons involved in scams and perpetrators will be dealt with in accordance with the law. Anyone with information on scams may call the police hotline at 1-800-255-0000 or submit the information online at www.police.gov.sg forward slash eyewitness. All information will be kept strictly confidential. Did you know that e-commerce scams can cover any type of products, from food items to electronic products? In 2022, $21.3 million was lost to e-commerce scams. Scammers would post attractive but fake offers on online platforms such as Facebook, TikTok and Carousel. Victims would be asked to make payment upfront but later discover that they won't receive the items but have instead been scammed. Today, DSP Lim Min Siang of the Anti-Scam Command will spill the tea on e-commerce scams. Hi Min Xiang, thanks for joining us.
joining me today. Hi, Hazel. Thank you for having me here today. No also. problem. So, can you tell me a bit more about e-commerce scams? What exactly are they? Well, so e-commerce scams are basically uh, the buying and selling of products that is done online. The scam happens is that when the buyer goes online and buy a product or service after he or she takes the money, uh, he or she doesn't receive the uh, products or services as promised. So, what are the more recent examples of e-commerce scams? Usually involves uh, high-value products like your iPhones and gaming consoles. Those are that very popular. But recently, we saw that there was an uptick uh, of uh, e-commerce scams involving uh, fresh food products like your salmons, your beef, and uh, baby products and milk powders itself. Well, I have to be very honest. I was once so tempted to buy an expensive electronic product online, but I was so wary. So, what are some tips that we can keep in mind to prevent ourselves from falling victim to such scams? I think some of the tips that you keep in mind are to be familiar with the Delta signs. So some of these Delta signs are, first of all, is obviously if the price is too good to be true, it probably is, right? There's no reason why someone should sell you something that's way cheaper than what is actually retailing. Uh, secondly, is that if the seller that you met online uh, choose to take the conversation uh, off the platform itself onto private messaging, right? So this is another way that uh, he or she uh, tries to uh, avoid detection itself. So they move it out of the platform itself. Now, if you do have that conversation with the scammer, uh, because they are usually quite good, they'll build a rapport with you, uh, they'll gain your trust and answer all your queries. And if you do fall for it, then they will say, hey, uh, let's make a payment, let's make a deposit payment for, for the product that you want. And uh, another Delta sign relating to payments will be, they will ask you to do the payment or to transfer the funds to a bank account or PayNow or PayLa itself instead of using the platform's uh, payment system. This is also a way to avoid detection. The point to note is that uh, the seller will choose to refuse to meet in person. Another way that you can protect yourself and be familiar with Delta Sign is to check the reviews of the seller itself and to see whether there are good substantial reviews. So all these will hopefully give you a better picture of who you are dealing with before you cut your hard-earned money. A lot of money are lost to scams, but are they ever recovered? So uh, there's no easy answer to that. But what we will always suggest is that or strongly advise uh, victims of scam is to contact the police immediately. We can then kickstart the necessary investigation process as soon as possible once you lodge the report itself. What happens is that when this process starts, we will then work with the banks and the financial institutions to try to follow the fund and try to crawl back as much uh, money as we can for the victims itself. Now, by having said that, it, it's really important to note that uh, once the money is out, generally the probability of getting back is pretty low. Well, thank you, Min Xiang, for sharing so much with us. I've learned so much. And if you need more help, please don't hesitate to call the National Crime Prevention Council Anti-Scam Helpline or visit the Scam Alert website. Together, we can act against scams. We have come to the end of this episode of Crime Watch. Remember, always exercise due diligence and common sense when making online purchases. I'm DSP Joshua Jesudasan. And until next time, do your part to prevent, deter and detect crimes.